Didn't see this one coming. I needed a cutoff wheel just to swap my ECU. Stay tuned. Thor decided to pay us a visit and burn an ECU in the process. Kind of like our sponsors paid us a visit. Empanadas 305 without burning any CU. Empanadas 305 helps you bring a taste of Miami right to your business with customers from coast to coast. Whether you've got a restaurant, bakery, or food truck, they'll do the work for you so you can bring that taste of 305 to your menu. You'll find their information in the description below. The night that it happened, I went out and found this. My lights are off. Didn't think anything of it, turned the lights on and off, saw that everything was fine, locked the car up, went back inside, and then the next morning when I decided I was gonna go to Home Depot, that's when this happened. Here's another thing we can add. My cluster's off. Now, if you type in Audi starts and then dies immediately into Google, you're gonna get hit with a million search results and a plethora of forum posts of people saying everything from the sensible, oh, it's the engine crank position sensor, or the immobilizer is no longer recognizing the key, to the ridiculousness of, I changed my fuel filter and it fixed the problem. Yeah. So anyways, we went through the troubleshooting procedure. We actually did find that the car was getting fuel. We did change the engine uh, speed sensor, which still resulted in this. And after that, we could only conclude that it has to be the computer, especially when we plugged in the scanner and saw that it was literally not connecting to the to the ECU. So luckily, our sponsor, Empanadas 305, stepped in and said, hey, we'll help you get a new ECU so you can get your car back on the road. And that's where this takes off. It's over here. This is my favorite tool. Favorite, favorite tool. And then there's one more that you kind of got to put your ratchet around that way and then feel, I yes, I got it. No, 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 don't turn. There we go. Okay. And there is our ECU. All right, it's never been removed, but I did plan for such an occasion so that we can actually record a little bit closer up. Just let me get this uh, situated. There we go. Boom. All right, hold on. That's not gonna work for you guys. Don't worry. I'll take care of this. Sorry, it's taking a little long. Hold on. Whoops, went too far. There we go. Now we can just check the level right there. Oh, that's good enough. Enjoy. So there's a slight trick to getting this off. That actually wasn't even all the way down. Cool. I just sent it further. And then the other side kind of releases like so. Now the ECU is removable. Before I go any further, I'm gonna take the ECU fuse out of the fuse box, um, just as a precautionary measure. Here we go. And there's the fuse out. Cool. Alrighty, so here's the here's the rub. So as some of you may know, uh, companies like Audi, Volvo, even Saab have been tuning or had their cars uh, been tuned by aftermarket tuners since the late 90s, some even earlier than that. This was a way for Audi and Volkswagen to mitigate interference. Basically, if your car was still under warranty and you had to remove the ECU to get the ECU tuned, it would be an automatic void of the warranty because all the technician would have to do is immediately open the, the box where the ECU sits, see that the cage had been removed, and automatically, boom, void the warranty. Since we no longer have a car under warranty and our ECU is dead anyways, we're cutting this thing off. Yeah, there you go. So the way that it's met, the way that it's made is that as you pull this out, it pushes the plug up and there's no room for the plug to be removed, so this has to come off. So to protect the connectors, we're gonna put this one back on. I'm gonna get something to put here, just so I don't get any 
uh, metal scrapings in here, but I'm gonna cut right off the top and I should be able to bend it off. And for that, we're gonna be using this. It's not hooked up to hair. I have to use this because I gave my nice grinder that you guys have seen in other videos, like the exhaust video and uh, other ones. I gave that to my father-in-law because his tools failed and I was down to one battery with Porter Cable but he had a bunch of Porter cable batteries, but his tools were failing, so I gave him my entire Porter cable tool set um, since I was stocking up on Ryobi's anyway. So I figured, you know, he could make better use of them than me just having them collect dust. So, I so he can work on his projects um, and they're still getting used, so. No, if we do it this way, the way it comes to the outside of the car. And right at me. And it goes without saying that I'm wearing eye protection. Yeah. Still very, very, very hot. Let's get, you know what? We have pliers. I brought pliers. There we go. There we go. Now we can pull this one off. It is not giving up without a fight. But again, we don't need this. There we go. So here was the shell that protected that. Hello? Okay. We were able to pull you off a second ago. There we go. Alrighty. Here's the one with the marking and seller who I have here is the one you sold me. And it is a perfect match based on the make and model, based on the year and specific version of the A6. So you nailed it there. So as long as this starts my car, assuming my ECU was the problem, and this starts my car, five star review. Assuming the ECU wasn't a problem, hopefully you take it back. All right, that goes in there. That goes in there. All right, so first thing we gotta do is put the ECU fuse back in. Okay, nothing exploded, nothing popped. It is freaking hot in here. All right, now, first indicator should be that the immobilizer light should not come on. I have the wrong key. I was so excited, I grabbed the wrong key. Correct key this time. Here we go. So, just to switch it to 1x there we go so the immobilizer light normally comes on around there it's that one okay here we go yes yes so I got a little emotional there. Um, I was really starting to worry that my car was never going to run again because it was just having the weirdest issues. But uh, thankfully, thanks to I'm looking up the uh, eBay user's name, ASAP used parts. <laughs> uh, thank you, dude. You you did an awesome job. You correctly labeled the, the computer. There was no no back and forth, no concern. You put the year model and trim of the car. It matched perfectly. I want to say thank you to Empanadas 305 who reached out and helped us out when they when I told them that we needed an ECU for the next video. So I want to thank both of them. So I'll leave the link to the seller's uh, information in the description. I'll leave the information to Empanadas 305. Go check them out if you have a restaurant, bakery, food truck. They can take care of you. This is going to be a little bit of a transition into more of a vlog style because we will continue to do the how-to videos, but it's very difficult to kind of develop a storyline with the how-to videos, whereas there's a lot of stuff that we do 
that I can't necessarily shape into a how to video. Sometimes it's more along the lines of like, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we need to do. And that was what happened with this one. So there's going to be a little bit more of stuff like that, and that'll help us hopefully transition into doing some more serious projects as I can put the videos out more frequently, which is what I want to do so that that way you guys can actually feel like, hey, what's Crooked Mustache up to? If you've, if you've made it to this part in the video, thank you. And I do appreciate your time for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the any of the upcoming stuff that we're going to be doing. And once again, I just want to say thank you for watching. As always, I'm Alfred for Crooked Mustache. We'll see you next time. Dale.